and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Are you ready? Yo, what up, what up? It's your boy Rabino. And this DJ Erm in the building. And you listen to the Up and Up podcast. Yeah. Wait, what are we doing? I don't know, just listen. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What's up? What's up? <laughs> ladies, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. You're listening to the Up and Up podcast. I'm your host, Rabino. And I'm DJ Erm, man. How you doing, DJ Erm? I'm good, man. I'm feeling good. I got some ice cold water. Okay. Yeah, we good to go. Okay. You bringing that energy right now. Mm-hmm. You bringing that energy right now. I'm feeling yep, that. Yep. Um, for those of you first time listeners, hence the name Up and Up. This platform obviously is created to cultivate the culture, right? Um, share amazing stories of individuals who are grinding on the up and yep. up, going after what they want, and letting nothing get in the way of that. Um, I do want to shout out all the listeners, all the viewers, the consistent supporters. You know, um, we appreciate it. We love it. We can't do it without you. Yep. Um, so make sure to rate, subscribe, review to our episodes. You can catch them on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, all that. All that. All and that. And like it, too. And like it, too. Yeah. That, that's your line right there. Yeah. You always say that. <laughs> um, now, getting out the way, I mean, if you're a consistent listener, you know we always bring the guests, right? Yeah. And not just any guests. We bring guests with unique, compelling stories that are going to inspire you, right? Now, I would say, um, how should I describe this guest? I would say today's guest is a woman who I would say is shaking shit up in the stock photography and online imaging industry. Um, She's a true visionary who's keeping everything she's doing on the up and up, right? Obviously, Mm -hmm. otherwise she would not be in this seat today. Um, She's a woman who's not only, you know, bringing a, a voice to the voiceless, but more importantly, an accurate image to those voices, for the masses to see. Um, someone whose hustle and drive has gotten her recognition from many platforms. Um, some of those consisting of Inc. 30 for 30, Forbes, Pop Sugar, Create and Cultivate, just to name a few. She is the co founder of digital stock photography company, Tonal, along with her partner, Joshua Kissy. Is it Kissy? Yeah. I said it right. Okay. You got it. Um, our guest is none other than the trailblazing, culture cultivating, and diverse champion, Karen Oconquo. Can I get a round of applause? Welcome. What's up? How you doing? I'm doing so great. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. This oh, is man. amazing. Oh, man. I'm feeling the oh, vibe. Nice. It's like a real African vibe in mm-hmm. here, too. You know, my sleeves are up. So. Hey. Oh, she's about to get to work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you're not familiar with the show, we usually start our shows off with the quote of the day. Um, just to kind of get our vibe right, you know, get the minds right. And my guy right here, he is a man of quotes, a man of words. So Love what you it. got for me today, man? All right. So the quote of the day today is, we need diversity of thought in the world to face the new challenges. Mm. Preach. Mm. Yeah. And who was that by? Um, Tim Berners-Lee. Tim Berners-Lee. Yeah. Can you say that quote one more time? I want to, I want to, I want to. We need diversity of thought in the world to face the new challenges. Okay. I like that. Now mm-hmm. to kind of um, explain, we bring in the quotes because we also want to have something that'll tie in directly to our guest story. Um, and so for everything you're doing with Tonal um, and the stock photography industry and, and everything else along with that, um, we felt that ties in. But before we get to that and everything you're currently doing, I do kind of want to take it back. A lot of what we do here is show people who uh, the person behind the movement is, right? Um, so where did things kind of start for you? Where did you grow up and, and, and how was that upbringing for you, if you can? Yeah, so I'm first generation Nigerian, so Naija in shout the out, house. Shout out, yes, shout so out, Naija, yes. no de carry last. Hey. And I, you know, am the second child of five children in, a, you know, upper middle class household, mm. you know, and just like all of us Africans, my parents wanted me to be a doctor. The joke is either you're a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, or mm-hmm. a disgrace to your family. Damn. <laughs> That's real. That's real. Yeah. Lucky for them, there really was no pressure. I liked to argue a lot, so I wanted to be a lawyer. Mm. Um, unfortunately, I was in a car accident. Um, I wasn't the driver, but as a result, one of my friends passed away, and I was forced to be in a room with a lawyer for like six hours. And after that experience, I told myself that I would never be a lawyer again. Mm. Um, But what I did love is just helping people. And so that really shifted me into the medical field. Okay. So anyway, the story is that I got a scholarship to Arizona State University. So I grew up in Arizona. Okay. But my junior year, I decided that I did not want to be a doctor. 
Mm. So it's like, what, what do you do when you've devoted three years of the four years you have left yeah. in school mm-hmm. to something that you actually don't want to do. That's How do you change course? That's a commitment. And in mm-hmm. an African household, of course, when I told them I don't want to be a doctor, they actually called a family meeting, similar to how you, you guys are facing me right now. Wow. <laughs> and he's like, guess he. That's how my dad says when he's mm-hmm. like, well, uh, what do you mean that you don't want to be a doctor? Huh? What, what are you going to do? And it's like, um, I, I really couldn't figure that out. Uh-huh. So I, I went to this event called the African Festival, and there was a homeless man who was standing at the door. And he pointed at me, and he said, you. He said, you're a businesswoman. You're going to tell people what to do someday. And I was confused because I've never thought of business. And I was like, who is he talking to? <laughs> so I literally, I did the whole like commercial movie look where you're like looking around. Yeah, and, like, is it me? And I was like, me? <laughs> yeah. And he just was silent. And I was like, you know what? God sends messengers. And that was my sign. Mm. So I went home that night, literally that night, dropped all my science classes. I filled them with some electives. Mm. And lo and behold, Business communication was a new major that was starting on the homepage and said apply. And that's how I shifted my whole trajectory toward business. Wow. I graduated wow. on time and um, ended up getting getting into medical sales. Yeah. And that's how I got here to Seattle. That's okay. That's crazy. Thank you for sharing that. And, and, <laughs> mm-hmm. But there's a lot that we, we touched on in there. I, I think it was um, like finding your truth, right? Yeah. Is that what you would say? Absolutely. And in college, that's that's pretty tough for people to do. Yeah. You know, yep. for um, real. you know, every 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 class you go to, there's a dollar being spent to be in there. Mm-hmm. Again, family pressures and things like that. Yeah. Um. So I guess for those who are listening and, and watching, what was it? You know, that kind of you know, because I mean, yeah, you did do that. You did go and drop your classes, but what mm-hmm. was it in you that said, man, you know, f this. This is what this is what the move is. Yeah. Well, it was twofold. The first, well, well, I'll just say that what it was, was that I could not excel. Like, Mm -hmm. everything was pushing me against being successful in medical sales. Mm -hmm. I, you know, if you want to be a doctor, I would hope to God you would want someone who's a doctor who's getting A's in all the courses because Mm -hmm. I was getting like B's and A (laughs) minuses and Mm -hmm. C's. And it's just like, if something is not aligning with you, there's a reason. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, I just also really enjoyed what I saw as the curriculum. It it looked like it aligned more with me. Mm. And so I wanted to leverage what I could with the scholarship that I had mm-hmm. to be able to just figure it out. Like if it didn't work out, at least at least I did. At least I yeah. listened to the inner voice rather than just trying to please everyone around me and be miserable. Yeah. That's important. No, that's real. That's yeah, real. real. Yeah. So um <clears throat> so how did you like start going into like tonal like how did that come to you yeah so because i was at arizona state university it was really important for me to be really social and get myself acquainted with different groups Mm -hmm. i didn't know much about sororities but i had seen a lot of black women who told me that they were a part of a specific sorority and i wanted to join it Mm -hmm. so uh long story short i actually got diverted from joining that particular sorority and went through a a more traditional Panhellenic um, route of going through recruitment. And I ended up joining a sorority called Kappa Alpha Theta. And I met some wonderful women in my sorority. And I started to just observe a lot of these women. And outside, if you looked at them, you would think, oh my gosh, they're so rich, they're so popular, they're so this, they're so that. But then when you actually ask them, hey, where did you get your sweater? They'd be like, Walmart, Target, Mm -hmm, Ross. mm -hmm. And I was like, how many women would die for an association to be with other women? And how many of them would love to actually know all these secrets? So when I left or graduated from college, I ended up thinking of this idea. I was like, what if I started a website? called the Sorority Secrets, where I share best kept secrets from beauty to fashion to, mm. you know, um, fitness and everything in between. But it needed to be told through the eyes of sorority women. Mm. So that's what I did. Mm-hmm. Reached out to two of my great sorority sisters and I said, let's do this. We ended up starting our website and it just took off. We were doing partnerships with Nordstrom, Target, Victoria's Secret, NBC. Wow. We Damn. were creating our own content. And, and now what age is this? This is so post-college. So Yeah. So I was, oh my God, 
Um, it was 2012, and I'm 30 now, so it's 2018, so I was 20, about 24. 22. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what happened was we were creating a lot of original content, but to keep up with our blog posts, we also needed to just grab content online. Mm. So um, a friend of mine who lives here, he had spoken to another friend, kind of talking behind me back, and he was like, I don't understand why Karen doesn't show black people on her site. Mm. And then finally that person came to me and he said, out of curiosity, why don't you show any of the black sororities? And I was like dumbfounded. I was thinking, what? I am. Yeah. I guess I am. <laughs> yeah. Like, how dare you? I'm black. Right? Like, yeah. I'm as black as they get. What do you mean I'm yeah, not showing my own there. people? Yeah. yeah. So I went to our site and I just scrolled through and I was mortified. I was like, wow, clearly subconsciously, I was only showcasing Caucasian women. I'm one of those people that when I see a problem, I fix it quickly. Yeah. And so what spawned into Tonal was that I recognized in trying to solve that problem of not showcasing more people of diverse ethnic backgrounds mm -hmm. in sororities that I couldn't find anything. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Did, have we realized all our lives that we've been subscribing to a white narrative? Mm. And so I was like, we need images of people not just for sororities, but just in general that, that showcase what we really look like yeah. and how we are real people doing real things. Mm -hmm. And so Tonal was birthed then. And how I met Joshua was I actually have a very great friend. Her name is Mechtis Mersha. And she started dating Josh. And I didn't know anything about him. I know a lot of people know him in the creative community. Yeah. And I recognized that his images were gorgeous. And I was like, oh, he, he should do this idea. He should do stock photography. Let me reach out to him and ask him if he would be interested. Mm -hmm. Reached out to him. He was like, eh, stock photography is meh. But I like the idea. So, yeah, let's do it. I was like, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to do it. Mm. And he was like, well, I'm not going to do it unless you do it. So we didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> we did not do it. So it was more so like you wanted to handle the business side and just let him take photos or? I wanted to do nothing. <laughs> nothing. I like, remember how I said earlier yeah. uh, offline, I was like, I'm an idea machine. There's all these ideas just yeah, brewing. Yeah. I don't have the capacity to do them all. I got so you. So I wanted him to do it. And he was like, no. So we didn't do it. Wow. Um, the, the twist of fate here is that that was in February of 2016. Okay. So, as you guys know, in the summertime, Philando Castile and Alton Sterling were murdered mm -hmm. by cops. Yeah. And the media coverage, the news was disgusting. It's as though these people were not humans. They weren't fathers. They weren't, you know, sons. They, they were just another black body. Yeah. And Josh, I was with him in New York, and he's like, Karen, what better time than now to do that one that one stock photography business? We mm -hmm. need to take back our narratives. We need mm -hmm. to show people what we look like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, back to the whole, the whole science. First, the sign was a homeless man telling mm -hmm. me to, to, to go into business. Mm -hmm. Now, this was a sign, you know, that Philando Castile and Alton Sterling would not die in vain. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to go full throttle. And that's how we started Tonal. That's, wow. See, now that's that I love that. Wow. I love that you mentioned certain moments that happened along the way, because mm -hmm. um, I think it's important that people do take time to reflect on their journey. Right. Because yes. mm -hmm. um, a lot of times what happens in the past can reveal where you're going into the future, right? Yep. Um, so now, obviously, you and Josh had the idea of, you know, changing the landscape. Now, how much research went into that? Because, you know, for me, and I'm sure for a lot of people, we go to Macy's, we might go to Nordstrom's, and we see the big blown up, you know, uh, model photos. Right. We don't. I don't really care because I'm here to buy my shirt and get the hell out, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't really pay attention to that. But subconsciously, you're right. We don't see ourselves out there. Yeah. Um, so... Like, how much research went into it? Did you go and see, like, okay, what companies are thriving right now? I know there's, like, what, what are the companies? Like, Getty Images and, yeah. and um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Yeah, familiar, Shutterstock. Shutter, and, yeah, by the way, all of them have reached out to us to partner. Or, really? Yeah. Wow. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 so how, so it sounded like there, there was a, there was a true passion behind it. Yeah. Um, and you said, what research did we do? Yeah. So what mm -hmm. research kind of went into that as far as, yeah, you know, this is the right move. If, if, if people are following the timeline here, I said that we decided to go full throttle in 2016 to be exact. It was September, but we didn't launch until August of 2017. Okay. So during that entire time, what we did is we did market research. 
just because you have an idea doesn't mean that it needs to be seen. You have to prove that. Mm. So we studied our competitors. What do we like? What do we not like? I even reached out to a competitor and I said, can I talk to you? I want to know everything about your business that you are willing to share. Um, what went well? What's not? What, what do you like? What challenges do you see that we could face? Mm-hmm. And um, then, you know, what we did is we decided, do we want investors or do we want to do this bootstrapping? We really weighed the options there. So we did pretty much a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, mm-hmm. and threats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we decided to also check out like you know what web developers would be the best for us Mm. and then we started to really piece everything together slowly which is why we ended up launching a year later Mm. that's a year later is actually Mm -hmm. good timing because yeah but i mean at the same time you got to go at your own pace yep Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah go at your own pace yeah, because I remember one time I think we were Googling like stock photos, right? Yeah. We oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we couldn't find like any pictures of like. <laughs> no, no, it was bad. Yeah, it, it was, was bad. It was I, bad right? I was typing it's in like, words like basketball and I didn't see one black person. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so. <laughs> no, like it was, yeah, it was that bad. It was like, I'm what the hell? Spit my like, water like, out. Like, yeah, like bro, was, that's us. Like, we're, we're <laughs> typing in anything. And it was crazy because like I never realized that like just my whole life. And I was like, damn, how yeah. did I not notice this? Yep. So, like. What are some of the things that you would think people don't notice about stock photography, like in general? Well, first off, it's very racially one-sided. Mm. All we see are white people in stock mm-hmm. photography. And not to mention, it's very um, corny and very just stale, the imagery. It's mm-hmm. not relatable. It, just, yeah. it hasn't even adapted to the times. When we know the imagery is being pushed on so many social media platforms and people are constantly evolving the way that they share images, mm-hmm. that stock photography has not evolved. And so that's the consequence you have when you have old white men, middle-aged white men, who run these sort of companies. Yeah. They are only worried about the dollar, and um, they lose sight of what really matters, which is truly showcasing what the world looks like. Mm-hmm. That, that's a whole piece of the pie that is missing, but to their, um, to, to their defense, the world has subscribed to a white narrative, so I can see why they've rested on their laurels. Mm-hmm. I mean, they don't got to, they're like, we don't got to change nothing. Mm-hmm. It's been working for <laughs> yeah. how many years now? Because even, yeah, <laughs> even when we Googled it, it just like, not that the only fact there was only just like white people on there, but it just seemed outdated. Yeah. Like it didn't feel like it was like today, like, you right. know, so. Yeah, but things are changing because we live in a totally different um, era now mm-hmm. where you now need to be accountable when it comes to diversity, else you will fall behind. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're starting to realize. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, it's, at the end of the day, it just makes sense. We're, we're living in a virtual world now, I feel like, right? Everything, yep. social media, everything's online. So why not? make our presence felt on there because that's where people are spending all their time at this point. If this was yeah. early 2000s, it wouldn't be such a big deal, yeah. even though right. it was still an issue back then. Now, more than ever, um, you guys are coming through what, 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 what's needed. Yep. Um, now, I do also want to get into kind of, um, obviously, when you're building as an entrepreneur, and I'm sure many entrepreneurs who are listening or watching can attest to this, there's obstacles along the way, right? right? There's It's not easy, and that's 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 just the honest truth. Yeah. Um, you know, along your guys' journey, what were some of those obstacles maybe you guys faced? Maybe some pushback? Um, mm-hmm. any, any second guessing yourself? Because it happens, you know? Yeah. Um, did you guys face that at all? I would say the first setback that we had was we were a little too comfortable with um, launching. We really did not know what it was going to take. Mm-hmm. But because we were so heavy on marketing, um, we had did this done this whole buildup where we were gonna launch during the total eclipse. Mm. And I actually am one of those people where I believe in signs, um, I, I use my first instinct, and I remember when I looked at the calendar and I was like, huh, total solar eclipse. Isn't that bad luck? I just, I just thought that, I was like, no, 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 no get rid of it. But it was just a haunting feeling. I'm like, that's a bad day. Mm-hmm. And then sure enough, um, it's like it's the day of our launch. And I actually what people don't know is I do medical sales. Okay. And of all the days in the year, this happened to be the one day where I was in like back to back to back meetings. So I could not help. But Josh was at my house and he was like trying to get all the pictures and work with our developer. And I remember I came home and it was like 6 p.m. And I'm like, are we going to launch? Like, what's up? <laughs> He's like, 
No, Karen, no. Like, he was like five energy drinks in. He didn't even know he was drinking energy drinks, by the way. (laughs) I was like, what are all these cans here? He's like, it's the juice you have. I was like, no. (laughs) These are energy drinks. He's like, that's why my heart's pounding. Oh, my God. So that was a setback. You know, not launching the day that we had advertised was a little embarrassing. But we ended up launching the next day, and it was fine. I'd say another challenge is making sure that you're not underselling yourself. So when we had these big brands reach out to us, a little bit of imposter syndrome came in. Like, who am I to be negotiating these contracts? Mm -hmm. You know, am I even sounding like I'm convincing? Where where do you you think that comes from? Because I I feel the same way as Mm -hmm. far as a lot of people from our culture who are trying to start things and and venture out and build their their own brands and businesses. Where do you think that comes from? Um, You know, I think that sometimes and I'm not saying that this is where I draw it from because actually it's not but I'm just speaking in general that yeah. when you don't see other people in these particular seats doing these things you you start to feel a little bit unworthy because you've never seen anyone of your ethnic background mm-hmm. or your socioeconomic status mm-hmm sitting in these opportunities Mm. so you almost feel like what am i doing Mm -hmm. here yeah because again you haven't seen it there's no representation Mm. for you so a lot of people feel that way i think for me um maybe it's because we're conditioned to think that school is what defines your level of experience because i was like i didn't go to school Mm -hmm. for this so am i gonna come across like i'm an imposter yeah are people gonna be like who's this girl and why does she think she can you know do this yeah but um, I've learned to really uh, turn that down because God instilled talents in all of us that school has no um, bearing on. Mm-hmm. So preach, yeah, preach. That's cool. no, just that, kidding. I like school. Just, <laughs> you don't need it to be <laughs> successful. No, trust no, me. that's real though. And I, yeah. I asked that question because it is it is true. Like if you don't see someone doing something, you might not. You, you just don't think it's possible. And that's right. really what it boils down to. Um, and so I also had a question about kind of your dynamic, you and Josh, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Is it kind of like a good cop, bad cop type of thing or how does it work? <laughs> Are you the one who goes and <laughs> kicking down the doors like we need this done? And he's just like. If yeah. he was sitting, he would try to make a joke and be like, Karen bosses me around. <laughs> well, I, I know he would do that. <laughs> what if and when he hears this, he'll start laughing. No, we're the dynamic duo. Like okay. we joke. I'm I'm the left brain. He's the right brain. Okay. Um, we do cross over in brain sometimes. Sometimes I do a lot of art direction and creative stuff, and mm-hmm. sometimes he's very businessy. Okay. But we recognize each other's strengths very early on. Mm. So as far as what I handle, I do a lot of the marketing and business development. So looking for new contracts and deals, and then handling our our presence online. Okay. And then he does a lot of the artistic direction with the photography, mm-hmm. and he works with all of our photographers. Okay. Okay, so you guys are also giving opportunities for photographers as well, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's dope. Nice. That's dope. My guys are here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now let's let's kind of <laughs> let's kind of steer into Karen, right? And mm-hmm. and kind of outside of the business, right? Life happens, right? Right. Um. So what do you do to kind of unwind, what, like to have me time? Because that is important, right? Right. right? Very much. Um, you so know. What do you do to kind of I don't know ease your mind? People think it's funny whenever I say this, but sometimes I actually do just sit and I stare at the wall. Um, because I like to just center myself and be in silence and just really recalibrate and just stay home, kind of be a homebody. Mm. Um, for me, I do a lot of traveling for, for Tonal Mm -hmm. and my other, uh, business. And so being home is a sacred time. So I really just love to be quiet and still. Um, I also like to travel. I think that traveling is so important. You need to get to know the world Mm. and realize how you are literally just a little speck. But even though you are a speck, you could have such an impact with with the world. Mm -hmm. And so I've traveled to um, 14 countries so far. And I plan to hopefully visit all of them before I die. Um, So, yeah. I just, wow. I love to travel. You got 13 yeah, up on no, me. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that, though. Young, <laughs> yes. Because there's, like, a lot of stuff, you know, you need to go actually see. And yep. it kind of brings you, like, when you come back home, you kind of have, like, a new idea to do something. Like, You're and, refreshed. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You Especially know? when you go back to the motherland, mm-hmm. you know, for oh. me, Nigeria. Yeah. It's refreshing. Yeah. It's I've crazy there. To, yeah, it's humbling. It's humbling. Because I've, yeah. I've been back to Eritrea twice, so. 
Nice. Same Good. Thing. I'm yeah. glad. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. really happy, and especially everything that's been going on with Eritrea and Ethiopia. Mm. Oh what yeah. A amazing time oh, now yeah. to go. Oh yeah, man. Things are things are definitely moving. Oh, and up. Happy New yeah. Year. What? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shout, shout out, shout out, out. shout <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah. It's lit. <laughs> yes. Um. So yeah. So, what is um, what is what is something that I guess for you, with tonal um, that you are accomplishing now that you probably didn't foresee happening. Like, you know how oftentimes mm-hmm. you jump in, like, all right, this, we're going to make sure this happens. Yeah. We're going to make sure this happens. And then when something else happens, you're like, oh, shit, that just yeah. happened. Like, well, is, is there anything that may have popped up or emerged that you didn't expect? Yeah, you know, I don't know what it was. It was so weird. It was like, I have all these weird ideas that usually happen at either 3 in the morning or when I'm in the bathroom. Those are the two times I have, like, a brilliant idea. And I was just, <laughs> like, sitting at 3 o'clock, and I was like, Forbes, 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 30 under 30, Forbes, 30 under 30. Literally, there was a voice. I don't even know what prompted it. And I was like, oh, I, I should nominate Josh. Mm. I should nominate him on behalf of Tonal and, and Street Etiquette, since I know he co-founded that with Travis Gums. And I did that. And I was like, you know what? Like, I had a friend. She's like, oh, she's like, how about you nominate yourself? I was like, or how about you just nominate me? Shouldn't that work? <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I, I think I'm the best person to speak about myself. So not only am I going to nominate Josh, but I'll nominate myself. This is the last opportunity I could ever have. And we ended up being finalists for Forbes 30 Under 30. Wow. We didn't get chosen. But it was so cool to know that we had made it that far. Yeah. And then in a twist of things, we ended up, as you mentioned earlier, on Inc. 30 Under 30. Yeah. And I realized that I wanted to be on an under 30 list. Mm. And I, it was just really cool to know that one decision to start a company could open up that sort of a door where we, where we could get that accolade. Yeah. And the doors continue to open. The collaborations, we've done a collaboration with Google. You know, we, we did a collaboration with Urban Indian Health Institute. Mm. We have more collaborations with bigger brands coming soon. Mm-hmm. I can't share too much, but mm-hmm. I just am sh- just shocked that one decision has created all this That's for all us, it takes. So. That's all it takes. That's all it takes, man. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's crazy. Literally. No, seriously, man. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's say I wanted to, like, subscribe to Tonal or yeah. became a, dis- a subscriber or whatever. Like, how would that look like? Like, you, like, walk me through that, like, whole process? Yeah. So in order for you to get an image, you do have to be a registered just subscriber. Mm-hmm. And then from that point, you can buy images a la carte. Or if you are one of those people who use images on a frequent level, mm-hmm. then we have like lower end tiers for you to subscribe. But if you are a bigger brand, you need more images, we do a lot of custom enterprise deals. Okay. So uh, it really just depends on your needs. We're mm-hmm. always working within people's um, desires. Okay. So yeah, that's what it would look like. Nice. Nah, man, I'm 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 super happy, and I I remember like being tapped in with the movement as far as when you guys were making your announcements about the company coming mm-hmm. full force and launching, and um, it just for me, I did some research on my own, just trying to see like okay, every stock photography image company out there, literally all CEOs and founders are all white, like yep. you said, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I like literally those like those like top seven or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I mean, there is. A great deal of responsibility on yeah. your guys' shoulders. Right. Um, and oftentimes some people might feel pressure from that. Mm-hmm. I don't believe you guys do, but ha- has that ever crossed your mind? Yeah, you know, because what happens is we become the, 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 we become the like crux for people like, oh, I need you to speak about, you know, mm. um, uh, this. I need you to speak about that. We need to see more pictures that are like this. And it's like, we're, we're going to get to it. We're yeah, getting there. We're yeah, getting there. We're yeah. now like the spokespeople. That was the word I was looking for. Yeah. For, for every underrepresented ethnic group. And so we're proud and we're happy and we're going to get to everyone. Yeah. Um, but my, the perfectionist in me is like when somebody says that they want something, I want to do it now. Mm. But I'm not the photographer. Yeah. You know, and I know that it takes time to also find certain people. Mm-hmm. So that has been something that we've just had to just... You know, take it for what it is. Take yeah. it day by day. And what's our what's yeah. our phrase, Arm? Set your Keep pace. Your pa- or set your pace. <laughs> don't react to the race. Yes. Yeah, we got a pace. Set your pace. I love it. Set your pace. Don't react to the race because, yeah. especially nowadays, it's like a rat race out there, right? Mm-hmm. So. Um, even with like when you talked about the launch date didn't happen the day it was supposed to. That's fine. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. Look yeah. where you're at now. Um, so as far as um, kind of 
what's on the horizon and things mm-hmm. that you got coming down the pipeline, which I'm sure you got a lot going on. Um, what are some things you, th- that you may want to announce or, or share with, with, with the viewers and the listeners? Yeah, so we are having a new website that is going to be launching here in the fall. Okay. And it's really just going to address a lot of the issues that our subscribers have had. You know, we're going to have better search tags. Um, we're going to have like an infinite scroll so it's easier for you to find images. Mm-hmm. We're going to totally redesign our narratives piece. Mm. Um, we're going to have um, some affiliate marketing opportunities in the form of like referrals. So people, nice. the people now can get paid, you know, on referring people to Tonal. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot in store. Um, uh, I got you fall. on that. Yeah, yeah I got please. you on that. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, go subscribe right now. <laughs> Thank you. Damn. T-O-N-L.co. Um, and then, you know, Josh and I just feel really passionate about um, walking, uh, talking the talk and walking the walk. So that means going to these big brands and speaking about, you know, why diversity matters and how they can implement that. Yeah. So we've been doing a lot of uh, tours, basically, at different brands of speaking I'll be speaking at um, Women in Digital. Yeah. Uh, it's a conference here in September. It's actually tomorrow, the 12th to the 14th. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Josh also has some recognition that he'll be getting at Ad Color. Um, he got nominated for an award there. So we're just making a lot Shout of appearances. Shout out to Josh. Yeah. 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 Shout out to it's Josh. Dope. Yo, it's man, because I'll be noticing that. I see that you do a lot of speaking events. Yeah. Um, whether it be for college students or even adults, right? Yep. Um, like, that that has to be uh, probably some of the best moments for you, right? Absolutely. Um, to, to be up there. Obviously, you're, you're a very confident woman, right? You got conviction. You speak with conviction. But, Thank you. Um, like, being able to directly impact people with your words and your experiences – um, is that something you wanted to do? Were you always a public speaker? Was that something that was in you or like, how does that come? Cause I feel like I if know, you're not a public speaker, that? like how do you just become, yeah, you know, goddamn you. Will Smith or like yeah. you know, something like that? Or you just talk in front of anybody? You yeah. Know? You know, it's, it's and, just, um, it's funny that you ask that. Cause yesterday I was just thinking about it. I was like, cause somebody else had something, something about me, me and my speaking. Mm-hmm. And I realized that it doesn't actually have anything to do with like being this well spoken, you know, public speaker. It's mm-hmm. just confidence, mm. you know, and, and confidence honestly can't be taught. It's something that you have to create from within. It takes certain experiences. And for me, I, I know that I'm speaking truth, so I'm not worried about what the audience thinks. Mm. And so um I also will give credit to my parents. You know, my dad was always very articulate and eloquent. And I used to try to mirror the way that he talks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, African parents, like, speak in, like, all these different, what is it, Um, uh, like, metaphors and Uh, all this stuff. And so you're just trying to keep up. You're like, what? They got their own, like, secret coded language. Yeah. (laughs) Just be straightforward. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So, yeah, I just always, I'll say that that rubbed off on me, but it's just more so being confident about what I'm speaking about. Yeah, no, and I love that. I love seeing women in business, you know, Mm because obviously um, we need more of that. And it's always good to have someone that young, young girls, young women can look up to and say, yo, she's doing it, I can do it, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Um. Yeah, and then so, did you have anything else you want to ask? Uh, I got. Yeah, what's what's one, maybe not one, but what's some like words of advice you'd give to somebody who's trying to like jump into the stock photography business? Ooh, um, don't do it half ass. I I remember I read something on Twitter where somebody was like, "Well, Tona wasn't the first to do it," and I was like but we were the best to do it mm. <laughs> because go. we looked at what was at first off. I didn't even know that anything was out there real talk. And then I did, when I did see it, I was like, eh, you know, mm-hmm. not bad. I appreciate the effort. I think the, the, the intention obviously was there, but if you're going to do something, don't do it half ass. Do it like as if you put your whole money and life on the line and that's why it took us a year because mm-hmm. we were not going to mess around with it. If yeah. we're going to do it, we're going to deliver it correctly. A lot of times people are so eager and excited to get their idea out. They did not do any of the due diligence mm-hmm. to actually figure out how can I deliver this in the best way 
that I can actually get a return on my investment. Because mm. people, they're just like, oh, no one's listening. No one's watching. No one's buying stuff. And it's like, well, where's your marketing mm-hmm. plan? Yeah. Oh, yeah. you didn't make one. Where's your business plan? Oh, you don't, ha- you don't have a one-year business plan? You don't yeah. have a five-year business plan? Yeah. And so I would just say, take your time and come out number one. Mm. Or don't come out at all. Mm. Yeah. I agree with that. Because it's like, even me, there is like some there'll be some ideas I have and I'm just like, I want to hurry up, get it out of there mm. yeah. before somebody else thinks of it or something like that. So <laughs> that's a common, no, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And but it doesn't need to be like, so you feel like, well, I don't have the money. It's like, you would be surprised mm-hmm. what you can come up with, with just a little bit of cash. Because if you have a good enough idea, all you really need is just great marketing to, cause there are plenty of people who have certain ideas, but their marketing plan either sucks or is amazing and you're like why is that popular like i'm yeah. genuine, i'm mm. really confused why that's popular mm. and then you mm-hmm. realize oh they're killing it in the marketing world mm. like every corner you turn you see an ad from them you see somebody repping them yeah. and it's like yeah. branding branding is everything okay. branding is everything like yeah i, I agree with that 100 percent. um now i always ask this question for our guests because it, it, it it'll, it'll sum up kind of a lot that we've talked about today yeah. But it'll also kind of cast what's ahead for you. Um, so if you can, because I know some people came up here and like, uh, 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 mm-hmm. uh, uh. <laughs> if you can, what's one word to describe what keeps you on the up and up? Legacy. You can explain too. If you oh, want. okay. <laughs> um, because you cannot will your job to your family. Jobs are not generational. But leaving a legacy is a legacy that you can pass down. And so for me, I'm, I'm doing this because I want my great, 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 great grandchildren to know who I was. Mm. And there are a lot of people who unfortunately die with a lot of dreams that they didn't activate. And I want people to know who I am. But I also want to I want them to know who I am because of what I've done for them. Mm. And I know that getting to a certain level in business financially will allow me to spread more help and good for people. And that's a legacy. Mm. You know, um, there are people out there who you'll always remember their name. Mm -hmm. And they say there's a quote that they said. You, you, you don't actually die when you die. You die when the last person says your name. So as long as your name is always in someone's mouth, mm. you'll never die. Mm. And that's, wow. that's the impact that I want. That's real. That's real. It's all about impact. Yeah. Yep. At the end of the day. For real. Yep. Let me get some snaps real quick. <laughs> that was, My that brother was, would <laughs> love this. My brother is a snapper. <laughs> that was real. That was real. Um, but yeah, man, Karen, we, we appreciate you for coming to the show. Um, you know, we wish you so much success, you and Josh. And, Thank you. And, and, I really the, appreciate We definitely. appreciate you guys. Yeah, man. Sure. And I'm proud of you guys for what you're doing. This oh, is thank you. very thank commendable. You, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank man. You. And again, um, many blessings and success to the future. And it is official. Karen is officially a member of the Up and Up. Can we yeah. get a round of applause? Yeah. Turn up. Turn up. It's lit. It's lit. It's lit.